You there. What is your name? Nick. Nick. Have you ever been magist before? <laughs> You're not, about to. Not legally. <laughs> I need you, Nick, to name any fruit or vegetable out loud. Rock melon. Rock melon. Damn. Uh, <laughs> one day that's going to work. One day that's going to absolutely kill, but today I chose Nick. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I am a magician, or I try to be. <sighs> Magic has changed over the years, you know, from the times of Houdini, Copperfield, pulling rabbits out of hats. Like many things, it has had to adapt with the times. Now, I developed a fascination with magic from quite a young age, and I used to think it was purely just about seeing something you couldn't explain, right? And that makes sense. The definition of magic is the secret power of making something impossible happen by saying special words or doing special things. But throughout my career, I've realized it can be so much more than that. Magic can be fun, can be sad, but can also start a conversation. It can transform into not just entertainment, but it can allow myself and the audience, even just for a fraction of time, to be present in the moment, not worrying about today, tomorrow, or the next one. So I want to challenge you today to just be present, be here in this moment, succumb to that childlike wonder the laughter, and enjoy yourselves. Because I don't think there's enough of that anymore. Technology has changed the way that we interact, communicate, gather information. We have infinite information at our fingertips. And I, for one, am guilty, and I'm sure many of you are, of just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. It can be the last thing you see before you sleep, can be the first thing you reach for when you wake up. It's no secret that technology has changed our lives. It's also made it hard to be a magician. <laughs> it's gone from, wow, awesome, how did you do that, to, wow, I'm going to Google that, right? <laughs> it's tricky. But today, we're fighting back. We're going to see how good... Google really is. We're going to put it to the test. So I'm just going to grab my phone here. I'm just going to patch into the TEDx sound system. Hey, you there? Hi there, Harry. Um, let's ask it, what's a generic rabbit from a hat? Let's ask, how does a rabbit? <clears throat> how does a magician pull a rabbit from a hat? Here's what I found on the web for. How does a magician pull a rabbit from a hat? The trick works by placing the hat on a specially made table or chest. Both the hat and the surface it is placed on will have a hidden opening in them through which a rabbit is stored and can be pulled through. There you go. Just like that, the magic is gone. I mean, with Google, theoretically anyone could become a magician just by, you know, asking, how do I learn magic? Google Assistant can help you learn a magic trick using ordinary objects. Okay. What objects do you have nearby? I've got a cloth napkin, a, a banana, some weird looking... Perfect. We can use the cloth napkin and the bandana. cloth napkin and a banana. That is correct. The bandana. <laughs> Bana Pick up the bandana. <laughs> now fold the bandana in half. <laughs> banana. Trust me, Harry. Fold it in half.
Now, fold it one more time. Take the folded bandana and hide it in your left hand. Remember to keep your hand in the most natural position to avoid suspicion from your audience. <laughs> this is an ancient technique called palming. Palming, yep. Okay. Now that you have clearly mastered palming, we are ready to begin. Open up the folded bandana. Show the audience it is a regular bandana by waving it up and down. If there is an audience member who is still suspicious about your bandana, allow them to wipe their face on it. Nick, you want? Pick up your cloth napkin. Well. Gather the corners together to form a makeshift bag. Okay. Uh huh. Using your free hand, fold the bandana on the creases you made earlier and drop it into the makeshift bag. From the outside of the cloth napkin, squeeze the bandana into a nice little ball. Remember, what the audience didn't see is that you never really placed the bandana into the napkin at all. You really kept it hidden in your left hand. Remember palming? No. Now is where you make your magical gesture. Fling open the cloth napkin and receive your well-deserved applause and standing ovation. Thank you, thank you, Google, and the power of technology. This is the part where we all stop, take a deep breath in, hold it, think, are we being present, and release. Misdirection is the basic, fundamental principle of magic. Magicians have this tendency to get big, colourful, mysterious items to draw your attention away from what they don't want you to see. So anyway, I have this big, colourful, mysterious item here <laughs> that I have dubbed the envelope of mystery. Now, can I please get an ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. <laughs> that was weirdly rehearsed, I liked it. What is inside the envelope of mystery, you'll have to wait and find out. I'm going to leave it right here in view the whole time. Now, for this demonstration, I require the assistance of a volunteer from the audience. Someone who has their phone on them, uh, who would like to come and help me out. Does anyone? Yeah? You in the blue? Yeah? Come on, give a round of applause for coming up on stage. No rush. <laughs> Hello, what's your name? Naresh. Naresh. Yeah. I'm Harry. Nice to meet you, Naresh. Can you stand over there for me, please? Now, for this to work, Naresh, you have to be the same distance away from me that I am from you. Okay, so... <laughs> yep, that is perfect. Now, Naresh, we've never met before. We don't Snapchat, we don't Skype. You don't follow me on Instagram, I don't follow you. You should follow me on Instagram. <laughs> it's in the booklet. Um, all right. I need your phone. Can you, can you, yeah, open it up for me? Um, I need the calculator app. You don't have a password. Perfect. Okay. Now, <laughs> I just need to, oh, where is it? Hang on. Uh, what the heck? Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. I need you to, there's a camera somewhere. Where's the camera at the moment? I need you to hold it towards the camera. Where, where are we? Ah. Why is that? Okay. There you go. Perfect. Hold it right there. Now, for this to work, we're going to be selecting numbers from the audience members 
based on what you feel right now. So I want you all to think of a number that means something to you right here in the present. Just think, okay? And if I call upon you, I would like for you to... Um, it's gone off if you wouldn't mind opening it. Um, <laughs> I would like for you to yell it out. So let's start with Nick again. Give us a number, any number. Uh, 55. 55. Oh, my God. Big number. <laughs> 55 times. Okay. Um, you there on the end. Give me a number. 12. Wonderful. 12 times. You're doing great. Give him a round of applause. He's doing great. Okay. Um, you there. Number. Something, let's say, between 10 and 20. <laughs> he says 7. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we'll get a few more. Let's go with... Oh, I see people are burning their eyes as I look towards them. You there. Number. Yep. Nine. Nine. Wow, good choice. Okay. Now, times. I want you to turn the phone to you. Think of a number that's personal to you, right, in the moment. It can be your age. Um, I don't know. Credit card pin. <laughs> and I want you to put it in. If it is your credit card pin, I'll have a little look. Okay, times? Good. One more number. You there, give me a number. Eight. Perfect. Can you press equals for me? Whoa, okay. That is a big number. Can you please read out the digits for me? Okay, one. Six, one, yeah. Zero, two, two. How many more? Okay. Oh my God. I'm going to try and squeeze it in. Uh, so the comma there. One hundred and sixty-one million twenty-two thousand two hundred and eighteen. That's a very big one. I apologise. <laughs> Can we please get a massive round of applause for my assistant here? Um, can you just confirm that that is the same number? Yep. Okay, perfect. Right. It looks right. You can go sit back down now. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to draw your attention back to the envelope of mystery. Can I get a... Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. Inside the envelope of mystery is a prediction. 161,022,000. Two hundred and eighteen, ladies and gentlemen, my prediction: be here now. Be. You see, this number isn't a random number. It means something to all of us here at TEDx Canberra. I challenge you to be present in the moment and be here now. It is no coincidence we got this number, ladies and gentlemen, for TEDx Canberra is being held on the 16th of October, the 10th month, 2022. And if you check your phones right now, the time is 2.18. Be here, be now, be present, and thank you.